That's better. All right, one more time. Let me share my screen. Hard to believe I've done this for like five, six years now. But yeah. All right, so this time of year, things are a little bit light in terms of WordPress news and events, but I, I have a couple of things I figure um, to highlight. Uh, one is the learn.wordpress updates. So they've added learning pathways um, and up here's part of um, that learn.wordpress team. We have Laura quite often attends our, our meetups from the team as well. It, it's really great to see kind of what's happening with this resource. I think it's um, it was so underutilized for such a long time. It, it just keeps getting better and better every time I look at it. So um, if you're not familiar with the learning pathways, uh, you know, as, as the name implies, it's it's a structured way to pick up skills either as a beginner or if you're more advanced. Um, what's nice too, and, and I'll, I'll jump out to show you, oops, sorry, the Zoom window is blocking me. I'll show you kind of what it looks like. So what's nice is there's kind of a developer um, set of these pathways, but also more of an end user, um, you know, kind of casual user way to go at it too. So from a, a developer standpoint, if you really want to get to the nitty gritty of WordPress, you can see the courses in here are as a beginner one intermediate theme developer. So the nice thing too is that these right now are um, are up to date with with the, the block editor theme development. So it's it's a modern um, look at WordPress development. So again, some of the, some of the books and resources you may find if you're a beginner look if you want to get into WordPress development, some things that you may find from a couple of years ago probably aren't as relevant these days because WordPress itself is, has changed quite a bit. Um, so that's that's the learning path for developers. And then the other great one too is if you're just a, a user of WordPress, there's a beginner um, beginner WordPress user pathway and intermediate. And again, if you look at these, the awesome thing too is you can track your own progress. Um, there's little like quizzes and things you can do, but the, the best part too is you don't even need to have WordPress installed. You can just practice it on a, a private demo site using Playgrounds. So I'm hoping that they're going to continue to expand these pathways and improve them, add new new material to them and everything. And again, the best part, they're free. So can't can't pass that up. Uh, Peter, anything? Think, have you tried them or? Yeah, let me let me jump in real quick. Sure. On this. So there's one thing and I actually made a, um, a point um, on, on the make um slack group about one simple small thing is back where you just were where it said preview mm -hmm. so that is actually the full lesson so it's a it's a small little thing but to know that because a lot of times you're used to you know preview to show you a few minutes of something all that means and it's just because there's a learning system as part of the the cms for it i think they're using sensei um, which is um, an open source uh, learning learning system. But it's preview because if you're not signed in, you're not tracking progress, for example. So there is a benefit. And, and this is all the, um, you know, logging into WordPress.org and getting a WordPress.org account so that you can, uh, when you sign in, you can keep track and learn. And it gives you other benefits on on dot org you know the way you can comment on things and and um you know keep your favorites and things like that so there's a whole lot of reasons why you know you might want to uh, just have an account on um uh, wordpress.org um but then being able to keep track of what's happening and learn and they they, they have been talking about if there's going to be like a badging system or something that says something that lands in your account so that you would get like, Hey, I completed this course or that course. So that's all going to be tied to the account level. So I, I just want to make sure, cause I know when I first went to it, I'm like, Oh, do I have to log in to see right, less? Right. Well, it's a cool way, like I said, to kind of see the contents or sort of audit it before you actually did, you know, commit to doing it. So I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it helps you just, if there's, if there's but one thing you want to go find right, and right. Well, we talk about this all the time. I'll probably bring it up a few more times tonight. But again, that whole thing that when you're trying to learn and you find something, you know, what is the source of truth? Um, what is some, and you know, what, what starting point brings you down a path? And at least in terms of core WordPress, it is um, uh, learn.wordpress.org. Uh, it's it's cool. becoming that source of truth, at least for core. I agree. Awesome. So again, check it out. It's free. Learn at learn wordpress.org. It's easy to find these days too off the main site. They've cleaned up the main wordpress.org site too. So that's that's also a, a nice thing. And just the other quick thing too, you know, if people can attend it in person or not, but just, uh, excuse me, heads up, WordCamp US 2024 is coming up um, 
probably before, well, yeah, probably around the time we're, we're going to have our next meetup next uh, month. So in Portland, Oregon, if you're lucky enough to be in the area, definitely check it out. It's in person, but I always bring this to everyone's attention because usually after these large word camps, um, a lot of the presentations will be available for free, usually on the WordPress um, YouTube channel. So be on the lookout for that afterwards. Um, so it should be exciting. It's always good to hear the kind of the keynote, Matt's keynote about where WordPress is going, just get an idea of kind of what's what's happening in, in the field and improvements coming. So again, coming up September 17th in Portland. And that's all I got. Tool or plugin spotlights. Peter, you got anything for us? I do. I do. Um, let me grab the screen. <laughs> Disabled. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Yep. Sorry. It was oh. chat too much. I've got to make you one second. There you go. There you go. You have power now. So you can probably see an admin screen now. Yep. Okay, great. So over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, we introduced, um, you know, pretty early on, I was going back right to when we first, uh, uh, when I was bringing up the admin and site enhancements plugin, and there was 90 downloads. Now it's one of the more popular. In fact, I'm kind of curious um, with this plugin, and we 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 come back to it now. There's uh, over 100,000 downloads. So in that amount of time, admin and uh, site enhancements is a great plugin for. Um, adding a lot of extra features in one plugin that you turn on and off instead of loading a whole bunch of different plugins. There's another one out there called WP Extended. Um, so WP Extended, um, now this one has now relatively few so far um, active installations of, of a thousand, um, but it also is, you know, they're calling, I think they're calling themselves, you know, toolkit, a Swiss army knife kind of thing. So it's another plugin that replaces many plugins and there is some overlap in fact i've got a uh uh i'm building a chart because i wanted to compare which 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 features overlap and if we want to come back to that we can we can look at it but um it does have free and paid features uh, like the the asc the admin and and site enhancements uh plugin so this is wp extended um key feature so Things like index, indexing notice, you know, if you turn off, um, uh, like you want to hide from search engines, uh, this will um, tell you you're hiding, remind you and things like that. But all the, the things that we're used to seeing, so I'm just going to activate it. We'll kind of just take a quick look uh, at the list. Um, and then if anybody wants, if we want to get into any uh, greater details, but when you activate it, so for those new, you go to the, it, this is free in the repository, look for WP Extended. Uh, install it, activate it, and then you'll have a WP extended menu choice now in your admin menu. And this will show you kind of all the modules that you have. And what's, again, what's really nice about these is the ability to turn things on or off as you do or don't need them. Um, again, replacing many uh, plugins. There is a duplicate menu plugin that I used to use quite often. Now it's just something I can build in and turn that on. Now I have the, the built-in uh, menu um, module uh, activated. There's actually a code snippet module, which is pretty cool. Uh, if you don't need something that's more advanced, you can um, turn on your code snippets. You know, we often talk about uh, code snippets where, um, you know, you can add some PHP code instead of going to your functions file or, or, or um, you know, I use a different, I use WP code box. I think it's, uh, yeah, WP code box two. Uh, is what I normally need. So I wouldn't necessarily need to activate this, but here's a way that you could quickly add um, code uh, to to your uh, to your site. Again, just as something that's within these modules, I'm gonna turn that one off again. This is how you, oh, I'll turn that off, turn that off. But um, again, going down the indexing notice, there, there's a short little description for it. Uh, there is a rollback manager built into this so that if you've got a plugin and it's not working, um, as long as there's something that the plugin has to activate, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I, I tested it and it was like, oh, roll back to a previous version and you could just go to your plugin and roll it back. There are plugins that do this, but right now, you, if you use WP Extended, you, all you have to do is turn this on 
And if I do that, um, let's take a quick look. If I go to plugins, install plugins, let's see if I got, I've got this installed, I think. Um, so say I go to, so now I have a new choice, rollback. Um, and it's going to give me, okay, what version do I want to roll back to? And that's just, you know, normally I've used a plugin for that, but now I can just use this one plugin and turn that on or off. Uh, Pixel Tag Manager, if you're doing advertising, something like that with Facebook, Pinterest. It has an SMTP email, you know, connect to an SMTP server to make sure that your emails get sent out. Uh, pro version, so they do have admin columns. That's the admin columns as part of the pro, ver pro version. The custom admin customizer, so you get into all kinds of level on your customizer. Um, that's pro. So it's interesting. Some of the things that they have pro, I'm like, that's a small one and it's free in the other one. So there's mm -hmm. that overlap also gives you some things that are pro or free. Um, uh, block username admin, which is kind of interesting, or you could you can let it know that you want to make sure that no user goes in and adds a user called admin. You know, just, I, I didn't even, I've never even used something like that as a, as a standalone and it's built in here. Custom login URL, if you want to obfuscate, it's not really a big deal in terms of security. It's not particularly... <laughs> Uh, helpful with that, but you can, instead of getting a, uh, a custom login URL um, plugin, you can use this. Disable XML RPC is, a, is a, a, another security thing. You just turn that on and it'll do it. Hide your, your WordPress version. Again, some used by some hacking to go in and say which version you have. And maybe there's a vulnerability. I'll take, uh, I'll take uh, advantage of that. Login attempts, maintenance mode. Um, you could you can set up a maintenance mode message custom uh, and on and on. And there it, it's, it, it's, it's just another thing where you could just have this one tool you go into and then turn on what you need and don't need. So I thought this was a neat, I, I found this through the WP Tuts um, uh, YouTube channel. Um, and I was taking a look at it and going, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty nice post type switcher. Again, things that when you go down the list, if you've been using WordPress a long time, you're like, yeah, I have a plugin for that. Um, I think the thing with my observation, it's kind of an interesting mix of things. That I, I guess I wouldn't have expected together. So that, I guess that'd be my one thing of like, like I know custom post type switch, for example, I have a plugin that does that. And you're right, it's like, you don't need to install that, but it's, it's very narrow in terms of what it does. You know, so yeah. it's like, it, it's interesting that like, you know, you, you, do they keep adding new features to it too? Because this wouldn't be the first place I would look for these these features, you know what I mean? Exactly. Like, yeah, they, they are they are adding more. I think they're kind of, you know, they're in direct competition, if you will, with um, the the admin and, and site enhancements. Um, yeah. But again, just some of these are just, it looks, looks like they almost looked at what little plugins are out there. Right. That do this one thing and let's put them all together. Yeah. Um, Peter, can you put a link to um, or put yeah. The, the, yeah, the plugin again from the repository? Because it's from the repository, I assume. It is. Yeah. Just ask about it. Yeah. I know you've shown it before too. It was one of those I looked at, I was like, oh, it's interesting, but I've never tried it yet either. Yeah. So WP extended. WP extended. Okay. Peter, there's a business model there. Uh, just writing that blog post of the comparison table between these types of plugins because. As we saw, there's the list is incredible of things. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. In fact, there's a few there's a few other things I have where I just want that list to say, let me compare. There's so much overlap. Right. And going, OK, if I'm making a decision between one or the other or, you know, even if it's a matter of going in and saying, OK, install them both and turn these on and turn these off. And now you have everything you need in two plugins, for example. Because Peter, can you put that um, into chat in the link for that plugin? Thank you. Yep, doing it right now. You could write the Keystone content and be number one in search when people search for <laughs> extended. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it, cool. And by the way, again, I always reference this one too. I'm, I think I brought this one up in the last one, but um, for anybody who hasn't experienced <laughs> plugins.com, it, it's a better search of the WordPress repository because I... I I'm driven crazy sometimes when I put in the, the name of something exactly and it's, it doesn't show up or it's five pages in and it's like, wait a minute, generate blocks with a space or no space changes exactly where it shows up. Whereas uh, plugins is a way of searching for uh, 
plugins uh, with this third party uh, index that has a little bit of little bit of AI attached to it. But anyway, I thought that was a really uh, a neat thing to try, especially again, because uh, I'm looking at things. There, I'll, I'll show you, there was one quick one, as simple as this. So people may, some some folks may have heard that uh, of, um, there's a developer, her name is uh, Aruba. I don't remember her last name, but she made something a while ago, which was a, a quick way to add a post. Um, and it, it's just something that, Probably a lot of these probably should be in core, um, but there that's available here. And instead of me remembering, I want to go find that. And I and I use this just for certain cases when all of a sudden I have a number of things where I just I'm, I'm loading like a, maybe a client's giving me a bunch of stuff and I'm loading things, um, you know, one after another. Now if you go into the posts and I and I'm going to um, let's see, do I get a default post here? Yeah, so say I'm, I'm I'm looking at this post here, and I've I've edited I've added it, edited it, whatever. But now, because of I turned on this feature, there's just a new button that goes to the next, you know, create a new post. And as simple as that seems, it's it's not easily there. And I swear, WordPress put it in core and took it out because I know that the that Aruba's um, plugin became less necessary and then just recently i went to look for that feature and i'm like i don't see it and i had to go put in uh a new um uh, i had to go get her plugin again and load it but now i see that it's in this this plugin it's just something that i can turn on on and off as i need it because then mm -hmm. i might say okay i've done what i need and now i just don't want that button there anymore or something like that you know being mm -hmm. able to have some and, and i could be wrong on this i seem to remember a conversation about that a few weeks ago that it was, and they removed it because themes and I think themes were like covering it up or something like yeah. that. This, this bar at the top is getting real crowded. Like you'd see mm -hmm. like this is an experiment um, site and I've got multiple block packages and all, and all of a sudden you've got things that are just totally, you know, running over each other. And it was up here somewhere. Um, this plugin puts it over there, but yeah, this, this bar is getting, gets busy. Um, I knew it was there, Brendan. I, I just, I, went I might be wrong on that, but I, I thought I heard that. I, I'm you know, going to say you're that, right. You, you saying that triggered that, so. <laughs> I'm going to say you're right. because yeah. yeah. I mean, we both feel right. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Perfect. But anyway, that's uh, that's the, cool. the plug-in uh, tool today. Um, and, and free version and premium version. We like, we like free, free version. A lot of the free version. Uh, the premium version adds, you know, actually what's interesting is they put some user switching is actually a premium feature, even though they put it in free because I tried it. <laughs> um and the pro yeah you get more things like you know an admin column pro kind of thing and and on down the line i think it's pretty fairly priced uh, let's see yeah, yeah. Just 15 bucks for a site yeah 15 yeah if you got one site and you just you know that that's not bad that's that's a nice fair one and oh look yeah. they actually have like oh $49 lifetime if you got a site. Even better. Yeah, and two hundred dollars for fifty sites, not bad. If that's very cool. All right. So the link's right. in the chat. People can check it out. Um so that's that's our oh Trisha's gone. I was gonna pick on Trisha. Oh. <laughs> we're, we're gonna follow Trisha's uh thing from last time. That's that's okay. Uh so Again, summer school, we're, we're open for ideas and things to discuss. Um, did you see, Peter? I, I looked, I think, a couple of days ago. Did anything come in through our our um, form about? No, I didn't see anything. Let me, let me double check in case I missed it. I'll, I'll do that on the side here. Yeah, we've got, and, and, and it's interesting, um, again, for those who I've got, like, so Karen runs a meetup. Gene attends lots of meetups. Um, Mark and Brendan are, are very involved. Sue attends a lot. It's interesting those that get a lot of questions and that those that don't. We do our best to answer to answer questions, and yet in this particular meetup, we get few questions. Um, I know uh, our friend Eagle, who was on the West Coast, he's got a format where at the beginning he asks, he gets all the questions up front, and they 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 get key questions. Uh, Baltimore, she has uh, um, 
Jen does a ask me anything approach to stuff and, and she gets the questions in advance in fact her form on the site. So I'm fascinated by the, the different audiences and where the questions come from. Maybe it's just that we're so darn good at- I was gonna you know, say, you know, we're, we're nobody's so got it. No one knows to ask this question for so got it all. We understand, thank you. <laughs> right. Well, if you think of a question as we're gathering or waiting for Tricia to feel free to toss it into the chat or, or unmute yourself again. I don't get, go ahead and ask whatever you like. I'll, I'll unmute myself and just, sure. I'm thinking about WP extended and ACE SE. Yeah. Like I, I have looked through the list and I struggle to think for myself yeah. why I would use one of these because I feel like the features that they've included are low-hanging fruit perhaps yeah there's so much overlap even like in the security like everything oh, everything that's in security is also in word friends free yep that i put on a lot of sites and i i i, I actually like putting modular plugins in so for something like post type switcher i install that on every site when i'm building right. and then take it off when i'm done because i don't need it otherwise right. Yeah. Yeah, so, no, you're not wrong. It, it, there's the, and this is this is such a theme about and where I've been for the last few months even you know not to open up this Pandora's box of but the different users and the different approaches to to things. Um and and why it's so hard for new users to get an answer because the answer is not only always it depends, but you know, it, it it depends on what you happen to find or somebody told you. That, that doesn't even ma match what it depends based on your situation. In other words, it's what you've encountered, what you've used. There's so many options, the number of options, you know. And I, I have a personal thing, but why I would love to see the repositories cleaned up and reduced. We don't need tens of thousands of of plugins and, and themes and all so so you're right karen there 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 is overlap and you go well this thing where i'm turning off the the rpc whatever the letter combination is oh. in this other plugin right true that now but there's a, the but again not everybody's loading that plugin or they don't know and then they see so there's, there's pros and cons i'm looking at the, the benefits of some of the things that says, okay, here's my duplicate duplicate menu that I only need for a short period of time. I can turn that on, turn that off the new thing. Um, that little, that little trick about the notification, there's that one thing, turn on the notification. You, there's a little red bar that says, Hey, you're telling Google not to index this website and it's up in the admin bar. That's a, that's a neat, I'd like to see more of those little things. The things that I go out to chat GPT and ask <laughs> for, a plugin to be written for me. Like, you know, um, I'm sure yeah. there's a plugin for this, but uh, one I just did, it's a couple of lines of code, but it's it's basically don't show me the WordPress core patterns, right? So the one, you know, the, the patterns that you see if you load 2024 and, and, and all, and I'm like, I don't, I don't use those. I wouldn't want someone to use them. I would either have patterns that we've created or that are part of, you know, a block set that we, that we've loaded. Um, that's a little snippet this big. I, 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 I'm putting that in my snippet manager, but I could see that as a simple thing that says hide core patterns as something that you could just turn on, on or off. So I, I think it's, those are, those are really good for, and I think the admin and site administration um, uh, enhancement one, ASC, um, they have more things to turn on and off. And I think they, they tend to touch a little bit of, you know, it, you're right. It, it's, it's a, it's a user preference thing, you know, just like some people totally go crazy when they see that somebody has 30 plugins loaded, but then they have 30 snippets. And you're in very often, it's the same amount of code. It's just how okay. you package it. Right. So that's, that's, that's not always an interesting thing. It's like, Oh, I don't have any plugins because I put all the code in my functions uh, in my child theme. It's like, yeah, it may be loading differently. And there's things like that. There's some advantages. And if you're a really good coder, but you know, putting code here, here, here again, in WordPress, there's five different ways to do the same thing. Um, 
can get pretty interesting and, and say, what's the most efficient? So sometimes I'm looking at the things that say, how can I provide a tool that will reduce the amount of confusion? I may have just added confusion. I, I, I don't know, but you know, so, but it's a good, very good point. Another tool, another tool in your, your toolbox, I think, but you're right. Sometimes like if you have, if 90% of, of the op, the things you need it for are done by other plugins anyway, it's like, you know, maybe that's covering enough of what you need, but yeah. it's good to know. Uh, all right. So what do people want us to cover and or look at today? Um, otherwise, we're just going to, we're going to freestyle. We're gonna, we're just gonna... Yeah. Um, hold on. I didn't see. So you're looking at the anything submitted, right? Oh, yeah. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah. I got distracted with a good question. Yeah. I thought I, I thought I did see one. <clears throat> I'm not sure if it was our last one or not, Peter. I, I thought it was from Gene. Maybe, I'm not sure, Gene, to pick on you. But was there a question in there, Peter, in our Hartford WP thing about um, sharing like admin passwords? Did you see that one with, with users? You know what I'm talking about? I don't, but I'm looking. It was in... And I think it was Gene. Gene, if it wasn't you, I apologize. But are you looking at the meetup question? I'm looking uh, at HartfordWP.com in form. Uh, I could attend a session uh, demo on setting pass keys. Oh, I do remember that question. How about a demo on setting a pass keys on your WP site for the client? And I'm curious if if that's Gene on here. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. That was me. Sorry. Your I couldn't remember what it was called and I didn't want to say that's me, but I forgot my question. So can you, yes. can you give the scenario, give, explain the scenario a little bit more. Like what, what is the, uh, when you say pass keys, what are you, what are you talking about? Um, well, I was at one of my many meetups that I attend and mm -hmm. they talked about um, having, I think Sue might've been in this one too, um, about having pass keys rather than using passwords that it's more secure, that you can only, and mm -hmm. when I, so you know what I'm talking about, because I know I'm getting, being kind of unclear, but when I looked to see how to do it, the only thing I could see was to buy a plugin or something for it. And it was kind of expensive for only, and it was only for like one site. So I didn't know if that was the only way to do it. But it's like, if you, I don't know if you have a, a Google account, you can use a pass key rather than putting in your password all the time. Right. But you have to log in from the same device. I guess the pass key, the second <clears throat> half of the pass key is on your computer or on your device. So it's kind of like a two-factor authentication thing with like a token or something. I haven't used that. Yeah. I haven't used it that is... for signing into WordPress before. I mean, I had to do it for my, my old job, but... Um... Yeah, where I thought you were talking about was in terms of giving, so if you're giving access to the site, a site to somebody temporarily or something, or for example, if I, I there's a couple of sites I maintain for clients where I need, I run offsite, you know, I run backups and things like that through um, with the managed WP. So for those kind of things, rather than exchanging real credentials, it just gives me like an API key that I can then connect to something on the back end. But I've never done that for like, logging into a site directly or to give to somebody else before if have any of you guys done that yeah it was it was supposed to be it's supposed to be more secure and they just talked about how people get annoyed with um the two two step factor thing because i know sometimes i get annoyed because i got to log into something and then it adds it sends my thing i'm like well where's my phone because <laughs> i i'm not one of the people that yeah my phone's attached to me and then the other thing, like with passwords and people are making them too simple. So I just thought it was interesting. And I thought I was going to try yeah. it on one of my sites. Yeah. So the people who could, the other um, users could log in using that rather than their passwords that it's just their name. And I'm like, no, don't do that. But um <laughs> Yeah, we're mixing kind of two things with that. So the pass keys, so Karen put in a link 
to the admin bar and I put a link into Kathy's aunt has talked about it. I know she's, this was an older uh, YouTube um, YouTube post that she did. And I know that it's come up more recently. I'm absolutely not super expert on all the better ways to do um, authentication and all it's I'm, I'm a little behind on that. Um, so I I've got to catch up myself. Um, how about the other experts here? Mark, Bern, what do you guys use for password stuff? Are you using a password manager, just regular passwords, pass keys? Just... I'm entirely embarrassed and, and don't use anything like that. I have a pretty close relationship with clients. Yeah. So that I don't don't do, don't do that, anyone. <laughs> you don't use a piece of paper, sticky note or somewhere? Yeah, like seriously, yeah. don't do that. Do you know, we, I, I like to use ones that I remember, do. like I use admin the password, you know, that's... Yeah. <laughs> But even those password too. managers too. I mean, what, what, one pass or last pass, one of those got hacked as well too. So you know, it's I, right. I, yeah. So yeah. it's hard. It's a problem with that. I, you know, I I, I use uh, a certain kind of pattern for passwords, but then I go. There's an article on saying, well, AI can break that really easy because you know, it can it it'll figure out your pattern before you even know it. You know, that type of thing. Um, I mean, so yeah, these pass. I, you know, the physical pass key that I or, or whatever that is called the fob the key fob yeah yeah <clears throat> they have virtual ones now I, I do one for like a, a Microsoft team teams thing I have to sign in using that sometimes but yeah. I mean two-factor authentication I hate to say it, but like most of the clients I deal with they're, they're so used to it for everything for like yeah. Netflix and all that crap to be honest that's the one that seems like people understand it like okay here comes your code they're like oh okay and then they send it to me yeah hey Sue you're muted. Oh, she's coughing. Right, sir. I was coughing. I don't use pass keys. They're um, they're a little tricky. I've used a Windows 10 computer to all you Mac people. Okay, fine. But Windows 10 is going to reach end of life pretty soon. So I either have to format my entire desktop and reinstall 11 or buy a new computer. But in the meantime... I don't think my computer will automatically, uh, it doesn't do face recognition, so <clears throat> I don't use it. I use Authy as my two-factor thing. I, I think pass keys are, they're new, they're cool, but I'm giving them some time. Yeah. Because, you know, session hacking, hacking your session cookies is the 60 percent of all wordpress hacks so i'm spending my time on my firewall and you know getting all that stuff up i yeah. don't know i'm not yeah. are you seeing them as like the way of the future or is this like something google's gonna get into and then like third-party cookies just say no we changed our minds i'll ask the geeks and i use the word geek as a compliment so that, that's to mark and brendan at least <laughs> Uh, what do you think? Uh, I'll jump in real quick. I um, I don't know what you guys, what everyone uses for hosting here, but um, I have the agency. I have my own personal sites and everything like that. I used to use Cloudways, and I recently switched to Gridpane. So Gridpane, like, is basically they don't have the boxes, they don't have the hardware, but they they utilize like Vulture, DigitalOcean, or whatever. And and the thing I like is that you provision the server through grid frame, but you actually have direct access to like vulture where we don't want to get super technical there. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because grid pain has, uh, I don't know the exact partnership, but there's a, there's a gentleman in the community called, uh, named Calvin Alkin. He has a security company called Snicko and, uh, he has a couple different products that kind of like, you know, like it's called fortress and then vaults and pillars. And like, he knows his stuff. So I try to leave the security stuff to those people and then just leverage the the products or the, the knowledge from them. So like with fortress, uh, that is completely baked into grid pain, but you could get it elsewhere, I believe as well. And you just basically turn it on and then you get a lot of that two factor stuff. It locks down a lot of those session cookies type thing. It actually like automatically by default, you can configure some of those things, but it'll automatically log you out. I think a lot of that, and again, I'm speaking slightly out of my depth, is like when you're leaving your computer on or you're leaving like your 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 user logged in for an extended period of time and you're talking about those session cookies and things yeah. like anybody could just kind of like get access to that. Uh, so you kind of don't want to do that, but it's also probably really annoying to con configure yourself. 
So I'm sure now that Fortress is doing those things, things like Word Fence, um, and especially like Patch Stack, anything in that realm, I'm sure they're going to do more of that now because it is, it is a concern. So you're absolutely the, right. Um, the stealing session cookies, which I'm sure Peter will explain in just a minute, yeah. uh, is really from a compromised computer. Yeah. Okay. And yes, everybody should log into their bank, their website, their whatever, and log out when you're done. That that's a biggie, but and it's a pain at Google. But yeah. the the session cookie thing I thought was silly until I found out how real it is. Yeah. And when Thomas Rafe says, you know, firewall, I, we've had a firewall. I kind of have in my home office. I kind of have a small business network. So we've had a firewall for a very long time. And I run, I'm, I'm Susie Security. That's what my kids call me. So I run malware scans. And this is going to affect business offices, especially small business offices where people click willy-nilly on yeah. links in email. Yeah. So, uh, you, know, you know, I think they said that both presidential campaigns were, they had phishing hacking attempts you'd assume they have decent security. I mean, after what happened in 16, you'd think they <clears throat> would. Apparently people still click on stupid links. Yeah. So uh, my contribution tonight is there's a website oh, called oh. wheregoes.com, W-H-E-R-E, wheregoes.com. And if you get a link in an email and you copy the link, don't click the link, copy the link, put it into where it goes. It tells you what the end of that, where that is going to take you. I use that even before I unsubscribe from lists that I didn't sign up for, which mm -hmm. keep coming. So I am a security nerd. And I'm telling you just, if people would just stop clicking on links, a lot of this would go away. Yeah. End of my rant for tonight. People are people. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Um, let's jump to Trisha. You had your hand raised for a while. So Trisha, right. I mean, we we're looking and you got to catch me up too. So we were looking at your site last time and Trisha has a really great looking site, which I'll share. That's my question. That was one of my questions because I was looking at the list of uh, options there. So because now that I've been to the to the group a couple of times, you guys are so much more like uh, back end and so knowledgeable of all that sort of stuff, you know? And what had happened was by me jumping right into Elementor from Jump Street with WordPress, not knowing a thing about WordPress and it was a suggestion from somebody because I wanted to build this blog. And so I really wish I had gone down the path of like learning WordPress first right. and even like, you know, their, their themes, like the year themes that they have, the 2024, 2023, and learning how to put things together and, you know, where they first started bringing in um, block elements and stuff before Elementor, because it feels like it's two completely different things. Because yeah. even though it's WordPress, Elementor is just using WordPress as like a desktop, but it's a whole different world inside of there, you know? Yeah. So a lot of my questions wouldn't be mm -hmm. as much about WordPress as it is um, Elementor. So that leads me to the questions for tonight. Besides, I just wanted to be in on the group to listen because out of the meetup groups that I've joined so far, and I was being so sincere when I put that message on your Facebook group, like I've learned more and felt more interactive and felt more like, you know, I wish I had been here from Jump Street because I feel like I really would have learned, learned, learned. But so now my questions are more about the website itself. Like, does it look mm -hmm. professional? I know mm -hmm. it's subjective, but from people who work in websites and do websites, uh, I'm constantly tweaking it. I watch YouTube videos like there's no tomorrow. And I know you can overdo it too. But when they talk about the hero and the different things to be able to collect emails and that's why you now see that little quiz there that's what that's going to do in there that it collects um emails as well and it helps the person so it's never about just me either though mm -hmm. you know it helps them to uh guide them to what type of blog that is probably on their heart most because after they they finish it the category that 
um, most applies to their answers will pop up. And then when you go to the Penny Inspirations, those are the same category names of those inspiration people, you know, whether you're talking about growth or loneliness or any of these wellness factors, you know, so that's what that's for. But I always feel like my pictures feel too, even though I know they're AI generated because I don't draw and I'm not going to pay anybody to draw a whole bunch of pictures for me, but Mm -hmm. they just don't have that like smooth around the edge where they blend into the page. They kind of feel harsh to me. I don't know if I'm being very picky. I don't know. Go go ahead. Well, I was going to say, so design itself is so incredibly subjective right to say that something should be blended or gradients or rounded or whatever it's there's no one there's no right answer to it Mm. what making things work together having consistency in your design and really focusing on things like the usability and making sure because you can always you know, you can always tweak the design, but it's, you know, part of design is also, are you giving them the right amount of white space? Are you making sure that people can tell one thing from, from the other? Things mm-hmm. like that are much more important to me than to go, oh, I'm going to spend so much time making sure that, you know, what what's what's the radius of my rounded corners kind of thing, which I see people do sometimes, you know. Um, you know, I don't, I, I, I'll use squared edges kind of stuff. And, and there's, there's ways of, of managing that stuff you know kind of much more universally which is again another reason why a cms like wordpress is handy because then you know depending on how you build it you can you can start applying some of these style changes across everything ray i was going to suggest you know Mm -hmm. one of the first things that i would do is if you open up you've got hover right hover five i go exactly what i was going to recommend (laughs) make sure that we're we're running well on on mobile devices so for anyone who hasn't seen this uh ray and i both like the uh the plugin called hoverify it is a paid um, inexpensive um plugin and uh, not plugin uh, uh um chrome extension, extension yeah. that has all kinds of uh, functionality built into it you know look at the css get the colors you know look up this type of thing where you can say, you know, uh, what does it look like on a phone, on a tablet, things like that. Um, so it allows you to kind of look at these things. And so the fact that, you know, you're responsive, the, the, the theme that you're using, even though, you know, with Elementor that you're using, you know, those tools become more and more built in to make sure it works on the phone um, it, it is like one of the first things that I would check to see because a lot of times we'll see somebody's looking at a design and then it goes, yeah, but you did, it doesn't work on a phone, for example. Yeah, so, they, have, they have it in there too. They have it for yeah. all four, tablet, desktop, phone. And, so this, um, look, this looks good. I mean, in terms of, of, of design and just, you know, looking at um, when, you, when does a font size need to be a little bit bigger depending on the device or little things like that are the things that you can tweak in terms of a usability factor. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say the main thing in terms of your design is, is and 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 yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a design hack, right? So I'm a design a, a designer who has developed who has designed things for years and years and years, decades, mm-hmm. decades without any formal training, and yet I also know people who you know have worked with me and for me with formal training that you know designed without the you they they designed for themselves. Versus designing for the user, for the visitor, the reader, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So if you keep that in mind, that that would be kind of my advice. You know, um, it's much more important. Like I'll look at things for a couple of reasons, including both the accessibility and all, and going. You know, some people need to animate everything in because they say it makes it look modern and all, and it's like, you know, or it's really annoying. So again, it depends. And doing some of those things maybe selectively and carefully which i think you've done i saw some of the things kind of animating in um i often go to sites that have so much animation that is completely unnecessary if i scroll fast i've got blank pages because everything's waiting to be animated in Mm -hmm. which is you know who who are you helping who who thinks you look good that way you know so again being um the 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 word of the of the decade intentional being you know making sure that you're making decisions that make sense versus oh i want everything to animate because it's modern 
and and it might not be. Um, and there may be accessibility issues too, you know, in some of the things. Um, I'm sort of uh, the same boat with Peter too, in terms of um, like, you, you know, what do you call it? UX, you, you know, use, usability kind of um, expertise. I, I know enough to be dangerous and, and did a little bit of it barely in my, my previous career. So, but I, cause there, there's a whole field of that, you know, like walking through user intents and all that. And, you know, especially as you start to get into things like sales funnels and all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. I, I, I do think one thing to maybe um, consider a little bit is like, what is your main call to action in here? I, I will say it's a little confusing to me looking at it because it is a long page and that quiz, I, I get what, you, I, I think I get what you're trying to do. Like that's your lead magnet or something that right that's, that's what you're trying to do but it's kind of buried in there at the bottom so it makes it kind of makes this whole it makes the page especially as you look at a mobile i think you could see it's very long so if i was looking at this for the first time would i have even given up I mean, remember the whole thing about attention grabbing people's attention that first like you know, people people are really like seven seconds or something worse than that or you know we have the attention of like uh you know a gnat so are people, you're going to lose people by the time you, you get down to the quiz part. They're going to say, I don't know what this is and I'm going somewhere else. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you solve that is my point, but I think that that would be the one area I would throw out there for, for critique. And, and then I, definitely others, if you put, um, if, if other folks have had a chance and, and um, Trisha, if you don't mind, I could put the link to your website in the chat. If people um, want to take a look at it as well too, because I'd be curious your yeah. other thoughts on on. So on I was going to say the same thing about the quiz about it being long, but I think two things that could help. One is I feel like it needs a header because it, it like blends into the mission section that's just mm -hmm. before it. I, you, I feel like you need some sort of header to separate it, which I would help. And the other thing is most of the time when I have taken these kinds of quizzes, you get, you answer a question and then the next one comes up. I'm not sure how you're building it, but I would th look at something like a conversational form that will only show you one question at a time. That's a okay. great, great point. Yeah. Cause you're right. <laughs> if you do any like long online quizzes you, and then to see a progress bar to say, how far am I in those steps? A lot of the conversational forms these days will give you that. So. It, okay. What, for, what form builder are you using, Trisha? Or is uh, it just like the, the Elementor one? Yeah, it's the one in L. It's well, let me go in and look at it. So, because I don't have, I don't remember. Oh, Formator, Formator. Form. I haven't used Formator, but they, do, I'm Formator. pretty sure they have a conversational. Thing. Yeah, they do. They do. But you don't see that heading there then. So that heading doesn't jump out at you that says take this quiz to find out what, um, yeah, I, I see that, but it but it's a different format than your other headings, your other H2 headings. And so yeah. that's why, to me, it didn't. I, I saw that as a heading, but I still feel like it needs a fun it. quiz or something. something yeah. Okay. Yeah, even using like colors around this or something to make this part seem separate. I know we hate pop-up windows. Everyone hates them, but that was like one of the advantages back in the past. It'd be like something to, hey, here, here do this thing and get the free whatever ebook or whatever. You know, that's kind of the. It it allows something to be a little bit more separate from the content of the rest of your site because I, I do think it blends a bit like with with everything else. Okay. Yeah, you'll you'll often find that that call to action being in some kind of call out row, a row that's a different color. The the buttons, you know, if there's a uh, an actual button that's going to bring you somewhere, or or a link that looks like a button, you got to be careful with that with accessibility. But yeah, versus does it just look like a blog post heading? And there's another thing versus this is the thing you want somebody to do. So, oh, again, always think when you're looking at it where are you calling the attention um you know people are not reading they're they're scanning you know okay. they're they're kind of glancing down um and and in fact and i see this sometimes and you know a lot of times you'll see where the call call to action is right there at the top and maybe in the middle or at the bottom because um you know there, there are plenty of times where it's like why are you making me work so hard to get 
to the thing you want me to do versus I kind of knew what I wanted. So, you know, maybe I talked to you and I, I just want to get to that link or I want it to be, you know, I don't need to see some of the other stuff, you know? So, um, you know, that's again, a design choice where that call to action could actually even live in more than one place, you know? So it, it's, it's that type of thing. Again, putting yourself from, you know, somebody sees this for the first time. One of the scariest things to do, but it's a great thing to do is just have somebody who doesn't know your site, use it and then watch what they do. And then you see where they're That's fumbling, good. where they're looking. You know, you, ha you have somebody and you say, okay, you can, I mean, even do things like you're doing now, which is which is great to do. And a lot of people don't kind of want to do it because it's a little scary, but you know, you show somebody who hasn't seen a site and go, tell me what this site is about, or I want you to do this thing. Can, can you do it? And if, if they get lost, now you can see, oh, I got to make that a little bit easier to find or do or whatever. Um, Mark, you were, you were talking about um, the, the form the form plugins. And it's kind of interesting because that's, um, there's so many, again, WordPress, there's so many. And I'm, I'm curious what people use. Obviously, Gravity Forms is a premium form that people, that is probably one of the most popular in terms of premium forms. WS Form is fantastic um, and, and, and worth the money. And yet at the same time, it's a little pricey. I'm on Fluent Form because I got the lifetime deal when when they were doing doing their stuff, and their free versions are pretty powerful. Um, but then you get into that whole all those lists and some of those legacy ones, um, and there are still so many people who use Contact Form Seven, which I don't <laughs> understand. I just don't understand it. But I guess if you, if I also the have the lifetime license for Fluent Forms, and I'm now paying the annual license for WS Forms because See, and I'm considering killer doing features. Yeah, yeah, I'm considering doing that. Um, Mark Westgard is the developer of WS Form, and he pays so much attention, and he to you know and accessibility. I know I keep I use that word a lot, but he pays a lot of attention. And forms are notorious for being very poor. Really, Gravity Forms does a fantastic job too with accessibility. Fluent Forms has done a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think that, like the idea of breaking something down into a conversational form, and you're right, there's probably a lot of different choices of, <clears throat> and if this one, um, if this one, Tricia, that you have already offers that, because sometimes it's just a flip of a switch in a sense to yeah. say, rather than have it one long thing, you need to introduce steps and say, where is step one, where is step two? So you, you may be able to do that fairly easily with what you already yeah. have, start yeah. from scratch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a great suggestion to at least make it a bit easier for people. Um, yeah, we, how about other people's we, thoughts on just the artwork stuff? To me, it, it's colorful. It's fine. Yeah. Is it is it AI-ish? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> so what? But, you know. that That's okay. To me, it's, it's no different than um, people using the, um, the, the illustration packages where it's all, you know, the drawing picture of people in a certain style and they're using that, you know, you're going for consistency. The problem with those was everybody started using the same packages and you, you couldn't tell one site from the other because they'd be, they're using the same uh, graphic packages. So that's, that is one thing um, that helps um, it, with, with even the AI generated week where you can have some things you do are you replacing the the text or is your ai generating the text for you no a lot of times i have to do it okay yeah, yeah they, sure. spell, they spell things wrong consistently that was going to be one of my questions too is there a way to get them to spell it correctly <laughs> it's all about the model which one are you using if i may ask i'm I, yeah. uh the paid chat gpt a lot and yeah. daily times so that uses um dolly as, a, as the image generator tool, which is not good with words. Um, there's a couple right now that are very good. And the one that everybody is being very interested in is called Flux. Um, so uh, Flux Schnell, Flux Dev, Flux, you know, all these models. The hard part is finding out where you can use it. And, um, you know, if you're you, if you're if you're paying for L, uh, there there's services that use that engine on them, and there's one that intrigues me because you you're actually paying per image, and it's like pennies per image, so that you don't have some of the limits that you you have. You just you're literally paying, you know, three cents an image or or whatever it may be. So, so on, on that, I, I was just gonna say on that note, um, just because I recently got it, there's a app called Merlin.ai 
and that gives you if you subscribe to that i got an AppSumo deal on it but if you subscribe it has access to all these other models too including flux which i haven't check, checked out yet but Oh, that's, that's cool. it's kind of cool because that you get you can try all the different models. So there's several different ones for text and several different ones. You can get Claude 3.5, uh, all the different models of that. So it might be worth checking out. I'll drop a link to that if that's helpful. And it's been a lot about learning how to write prompts from B2 for getting it, you know. So I actually just did a whole PowerPoint presentation that I was going to offer as, as a lead magnet. The the um the the quiz in the front can be considered a lead magnet because the whole concept of the website is a blog page. It's just a blog page. Right. But the um, lead magnet part of being able to get more email addresses, I was going to attach that at the end or anywhere out on social media when I invite people to come over besides inviting guest blogging, which that's a whole nother conversation with what I'm doing there. But um, I right, created a can I ask though, yeah. from, a, from a lead magnet standpoint, I know what you get out of it. You get their emails. What does what does the taker of the quiz get out of it? What's what's their? It doubt? narrows down what like if they go, well, I don't know what to write about. I don't know what blog. Once okay. you go through the quiz, the five questions, then it will come up. It'll pop up, which is a category. The blogs are essentially based on category. If you go to the blog, all the girls that are under the blogs, the different um, you know adaptable flexibility and all the other one there's a whole slew of them underneath the blog link um that one of those will come up at the end and so once they go over to the pennywise voice the pennywise inspiration then they can read like the initial one that is from them and see if they want to write about that because obviously that should be something they identify with if that's the response that came up on the quiz but then obviously you can go to any of them and write about anything you want to write about Gotcha. So it's kind of a, um, like you said, kind of a, a prompt for them to say, okay, here's here's an idea generator thing for if you if you submit a blog. That's correct. W what you would like to, because a lot of people go, I don't know what I want. I don't know what to write about. I don't know what to, yeah. and it, it just narrows down your interests, I guess, is how you'd say it. I, I think the artwork, I, I don't love a lot of AI artwork, but I think it works really well in your particular context where the name of your blog includes the word animated. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, you're using animated, I am assuming in sort of the like active type term, but the fact that you have all of this animated artwork also, it, it feels right for your blog. Mm -hmm. I think that, that your friend is in picture needs some work. It's, you got that's well, like she's she's in a bus stop somewhere with no knee with no uh shit. No, so you guys <laughs> not actually sitting on the seat <laughs> yeah oh she's missing off the seat okay yeah 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 i see and, that and her, but, and her here's the whole chopped off let, yeah. let me give you but what i like what um he said earlier about somebody going through the site without knowing it so you guys doing that is pretty cool but i what i try to do is create a theme all the way through and like if you watch yes. the video if you watch the video on the front the booth is is the first cousin to what Lucy did, the advice booth from Peanuts. Oh, there so you go. There, yes. Yeah. The yeah no, I, you, I think you've done a really great job in terms of consistency of feel of the imagery and um, and diversity, which uh, is a hard thing to get in a lot of uh, artwork too. I, mm -hmm. I, I think you've done a really great job in giving a feel, a consistent feel to this blog. Yeah, yeah I will you. tell you that for um, uh, AI generated images, you've done better than most that I've seen in terms of a consistency. Yes. You do have, I don't know if you're seeding it or if you're doing the whole thing that says, hey, use this as a base and all that's where the AI uh, image generators are getting better and better and better where you you know, you know can you can start using the same models and the same thing and all. And then the prompt generating is, is its own. Now, you know, being able to write the right prompt using AI to write the prompt for you, which is this weird inception kind of AI thing where AI is telling AI how to write, you know, uh, what, what to design. Um, but having some of even what appear to be the same characters or similar characters, that's, that, that's, uh, that really helps because I'm always, again, I'm looking for consistency. If, if the, the, the color palettes and things like that, um, you know, work well together versus everything looking like, you know, 
uh, just clashing. So um, kudos to you for that. I'm yeah, I mean, we could pick on we could pick on the fact that she's not sitting on the bench, and and her. <laughs> I didn't even say that. <laughs> yeah, but the but the flip side is you're still getting your messaging across. That's much smaller than the fact that I like the image itself. So yes, you know. I I will throw out though again it's probably more of an SEO perhaps yeah. concern is it is heavy on images. So your homepage to me seems very heavy on images, which is nice from an eyeball standpoint, right. but from an SEO standpoint, it may be very thin on content in terms of what the search. So that was another is. that was another one putting alt text on the images. It helps. With Keywords and all that, does that work? Not the keywords not key part. The no, all, not... text, all text in the sense of at least in Peter's accessibility person, it, it, all text is supposed to be for, for uh, you know, visually impaired people so they can understand right. the image itself. Okay. But I would say even beyond that though, one thing and I often see this too, like with client sites as well, is I can read these words, adaptable, fashionista, et cetera. First off, a, a vision impaired person can't, but also, you know, who else can't read them is, Google or a search engine. So, you know, there's that balance of putting images directly into, in, I'm sorry, putting text directly into images. That text, at least today, it is not directly, um, uh, you know, searchable through like, you know, websites yeah. or crawlers and things like that. So, so alt it, text doesn't fix that though, that Google doesn't search the alt text? It'll, Google it'll, does. See, so, Google does see the, the alt text, but the alt it, it's not a primary driver. It just okay. is another piece of text that the site sees, uh, Google sees as what is the site about. Um, mm. It's gotten much better. I mean, it used to be right. You could you could trick Google so many ways, you know. Um, and and keyword stuffing alt text used to be um, a way of doing it. But you know, when you do everything in air quotes correctly right so as best we can you know you're writing an alt text that is describing what the image is so so somebody who is vision impaired can can say you know um you know woman standing in a booth with the word fashionista above her whatever you know whatever sentence or two that explains that so the word fashionista will be there because you should if you have words in an image in an alt text you should you should convey that right you should say if somebody can read it then if if you can't see the screen reader, right? They're using a screen reader tool should be able to tell them in effect what the image is. Writing alt text is admittedly could be very hard. It's 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 a bit of a chore until you get into the rhythm of doing it regularly versus going back and, and, and checking it. But it's one of those things that will say, and here's another kind of aspect of Google, you're paying attention to the alt text and you're writing good alt text for a screen reader. Therefore, the quality of your site is going to be considered better, and there are there are accessibility um, measures that are being taken into account when you do um, the 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 light speed type testing and the core values and uh, core. What's the word you get? So core vitals. To, yeah, yeah, core vital stats and things like that, where you know you're looking at the content of a site and breaking it down into numbers, but. Again, it's not just that. And, and I, I, used aside. Have, I used to have, I, I can't find it anymore. I don't know if you have something similar, Peter, but there, I used to have a tool someplace where you could basically look at a site and, and just see kind of the text content of it and not see all the images. Oh, yeah. I don't even see them as placeholders. And I can't find that anymore, but it, it's, a, it's a helpful way to almost like look at your site just from a text. See, you know, look at the text that's on the site. Because, like I said, I just, you know, this is more of an SEO thing. And to be honest, these days, SEO is so hard to try to <laughs> figure out what's going on with it with, with SEO and what's going to rank you or, or not. But um, right. as I said, having a page with lots of images could be great, you know, for a, the viewer who gets that site. But how do they ever find you to begin with? Because if there's not enough text on there for Google to image and have somebody come up in a search, then you know the images don't necessarily count for much. I mean, I think your blog entries, though, that could be the place. Maybe that's where you're really going to, um, you know, those are going to be like the long tail. And that's going to be the the text heavy thing. Oh, let's let's see. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have a decent amount of text in here. But my guess is some of these, especially as you said, your blog seems to be a mix of things, right? 
because these blog top, they're not, it's not going to be a focused blog, right? The, the topics can be wide and varied. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, because it's it's everything. If you click under the blog link and you see all those words, but they're still all having to do with self empowerment sort of stuff, you know, and that uh, uh, not the blog link. I'm sorry, the Pennywise voices. Uh, they're, they're the key. Oh. they're the most. Pennywise inspirations or your voice? Yeah, Pennywise inspirations. Okay, cultural wellness foundation. So those are all the topics that the blogs are. But I mean, people are welcome to go outside of them. And of course, I created that little uh, book club if people want to talk. It's almost like trying to recreate another Facebook, but not yeah. Facebook. <laughs> or like uh, more <laughs> FAQs. The, the term you're looking for is lifestyle blog. That's what the a lifestyle blog does. You talk about your life, and that's and which is a great niche of blogging. And you don't have to narrow yourself down because that's the point of a lifestyle blog. You're you're talking case, about though, everything. But in, in this case, I go. It's not a single person's lifestyle, right? This one is is multiple people posting their or one person with multiple things going on too it could be a mom that's having a yeah. hard time with this or you know working a working it's everything yeah it's gonna be yeah, i still I... see that as a lifestyle blog because even though it might be multiple people writing like you're talking about how do you live your life is the bottom yeah. line of a lifestyle blog yeah I'm going to, I'm going to hop in here with changing the topic, but all about your site. And again, something that's easily, easy to miss. And it is regarding the performance and specifically, not only there are a lot of images, which can be okay, depending on how you handle them, but also as simple as your images, which does happen with a lot of the AI generators are, are PNG files. Hmm. They're far larger than they need to be. So the, the amount of time it takes to load your site mm -hmm. is is uh, a lot longer because PNG files, whenever you have a photo or, for example, I'm looking at kind of your hero image and it's lots of colors, gradients, things like that. The PNG uh, file format is not efficient at at showing that kind of image. Um, those, those, those types of images get really big. You know, PNGs are great. PNGs are used when you need a, a, a transparent background or if you know, logos are great for with PNGs, um, things that are a little bit more bold graphics. Um, these should be at the very least a JPEG or a WebP image, which are now a faster. I don't use WebP much now. I'd be curious if anybody does. Um, but you may want to look into either converting them or using a plugin, something like a short pixel uh, plugin. Um, that's kind of the one I use um, that can help you compress some of the images oh, and yeah. turn them into uh, um, smaller, <laughs> smaller file sizes because of using the right compression with them. Okay. Yeah. Great. You'd be surprised again, somebody goes, but all of a sudden they go pull it up on a phone and it takes so long that they end up not looking at the site in the first place. Right. You know, those, I mean, that's where the cool. performance makes a big difference. And um, Ray, if you, if you do a uh, lighthouse look at it, um, yeah, we can I, just, I did, I just, only, <laughs> I didn't do it Yeah. Jean, you have your hand raised. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, Peter, you said you don't use WebP anymore. How come? No, not, I, I don't use it yet. <laughs> Oh, use it yet? Okay. Because yeah, I'm I like, oh my it, goodness, I've been using it for like a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I, okay. Yeah, I'm not. Okay. I'm not using it with any kind of consistency. Um, you know, remember, it's only it's it's relatively new to WordPress that WordPress uses it, um, and I just have to, you know, honestly, just have to flick the switch in short pixel. Let's say use WebP when you can, and and short pixel is great because it also. Uh, I believe still detects if it if you happen to be on a browser, which there are like none now that don't uh, use the WebP format. Um, so it's not even an issue, but it would it would say, oh, this browser can't. So send them the JPEG version. So that's right. If you're using Netscape three, uh, it'll send the old version. Yes. That's right. All right. Uh, IE six. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what? At that point, I just say, if the company that makes it doesn't support it anymore, neither do I. You're on exactly. your own. <laughs> I had to say that for, for old yeah. Safari devices. I think it was like Safari 10 yes. or something. I, I just told clients, like, I'm not going to support that anymore. Yeah. I have my contract now. Yeah. Support modern browsers. Yeah. So the yeah. score went down a bit when I did mobile. So it went down to like 61. And again, you know, I always take these things with a grain of salt. Don't don't worry about the score yes. so much as like what Peter was saying. Look at look at some of the results it tells you. So yeah, but in particular for mobile, yes, performance is is a big consideration. All right. Well, that's it for me, though. I, that's great. Thank you guys so, so very much. No, thank you. I took them from WebP. I took them from WebP over to PNG because you can't oh. edit it in. You can't edit it in uh, in um, Photoshop as a WebP. That's the problem. So they come yeah. in a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I forget. Yes, you can. You can. You can edit WebP like in recently, Photoshop, though, right? You can well, whatever whatever the version is now. Yeah, I think it's or a maybe I have beta. But yes, I've been I've been editing WebP for this summer, all summer. Okay, I'll double check because I have access to another one too. I have an old Elements one that I use a lot, so that's probably why. Hmm. Yeah, um, I wouldn't think the Elements would. But I have give the you other, that option. I don't use it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Photo, Photoshop 23.2 as of. So, yeah, relatively recent. Keep bringing the site back, Trisha. We want to keep seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> we used to, yeah, we you guys have this. to help me figure out how to get uh, how to get guest bloggers. That's the hard part now. <laughs> compared to everything else, the site was easy. You know, I thought it was going to be easy just to go get people and get them to come because everybody wants to Ooh. share so much on social media. Come on over oh. here and share here. They act oh. like I'm... I'm Doing something criminal over there. Oh, who do you want us over there for? It's the, it's the marketing. Marketing is the hard part. Again, you know, you build a website now. It's like, who who knows? How do you tell people about it? So that's that's the part you got to do. That use the the real old school social media or different social medias and let people know and drive them to the site. So yeah, but, yeah. Even my yeah. overshare, my oversharers are scared. <laughs> people who have been on my Facebook page forever and like you actually have to put a block on how much they show up on your timeline, right? But then if you say, hey, you want to come be over on my blog? You're like, what? What is that? <laughs> care every two seconds. <laughs> so I heard right. Thank you, guys. Of, Thank I heard, you. I heard something kind of interesting. You're welcome. I, I heard something kind of interesting today that was um, related to the whole, like, what platform should you be? I found a really good video uh, of a guy who was comparing... Uh, Squarespace, Wix, um, you know, those. And he didn't get into uh, WordPress for a couple of reasons. One, he has a separate approach to it. But one of the things that I think came up from that, or I saw a link from it, was somebody um, was on Webflow and they got their their bill that they would get went up by like fifteen thousand dollars because they the bandwidth that they were using and saying that oh you should be the it's this enterprise thing and there's often talk about well, why should somebody be in WordPress and that one of the reasons why WordPress is a good platform not the easiest by not not by far is not only is it open source but you know you have control over your content where it lives how it lives and all versus being in these, these um, you know, closed applications thing where the rules can change, the pricing can change, things like that. So that was kind of interesting where they went from, you know, uh, paying $400 a year or whatever to $15,000 or whatever the numbers are, you know, it was, it was exorbitant no matter how you look at it. And it's like, or you, or, you know, you have a week to get off our platform. And of course you can't easily transfer that data which is part of the whole uh, blackmail to say give us more oh there's that and then from the wordpress side you know that 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 data liberation effort yeah. right, to make sure that you know you can extract your data um and maybe working with other platforms to say well how can we import export things like that um so you know, that was kind of an interesting thing in terms of you know the 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 platform that we choose to use and the pros and cons and 
and mm -hmm. that ability to have control over you know, saying, okay, I'm taking my ball and going elsewhere kind of thing. Um, we, we never really talked about it, Peter, as, as a topic, because it might be too nerdy and maybe bore people to death too. But like, and especially these days, it's a little harder because depending on what type of um, managed WordPress or what kind of WordPress hosting people are using, there's not as much like raw data available to people as there used to be when everyone had like cPanel and all that kind of stuff. But mm. kind of looking at those backend things like, Oh, why am I running out of disk space? Why is my CPU utilization yeah. high? You, you know, looking at kind of those logs and, and things like what could be eating up all of this this space and doing a little bit of analysis for that. I I had a client site <clears throat> where I don't know if they ever really got they ended up like just opening a ticket with with their hosting thing to figure it out, but it was a, it was a spike in CPU utilization. And it was just, it was some process that was running that had nothing to do with their site. It was yep. something else. It was shared hosting thing. So something was running and it seemed to be eating up all their CPU and their site was timing out. And that's, you know, they ended up moving it to, to like a different like instance or something. But it, it's yeah. one of those, that's a real like hardcore thing. Not everyone's going to need to know how to do it, but it's, it's good to know that that data is out there. So that might be something to play around. Yeah, no, that, that is an interesting topic. I used to be years ago on SiteGround. And unlimited sites, except for you're <laughs> using too many nodes page. or whatever the heck the the thing that I couldn't do anymore because I was using too many file types or something. I don't know. Right. Like you know, basically it was the number of files. So it's like it's not. I mean, nothing is unlimited, but you know that idea. Oh, put as many sites as you want, except for you won't possibly be able to do more than six or whatever whatever right. the number right. was because of. The use of nodes but understanding i've always been pro on the more we can understand how things work the more we can like troubleshoot and figure out and go wait a minute what's going on here okay. um i in one of these plugins the plugin uh that i was showing today i think there was there's a where you can control the heartbeat the wordpress heartbeat and i'm like what is the wordpress heartbeat which is basically <laughs> pinging back to you know and, and saying you know the auto saves and things like that well that that takes CPU, that takes, you know, cycles. So, you know, do you want to do that? Things like that. So kind of that whole thing. Right now, I think the thing that has really become maybe a, a, a less discussed topic than maybe I think it should is how much is happening in the browser and the impact that that has in terms of editing speed and, you know, just things hanging or not working and things like that. And I, I think that's that's kind of a, that needs to be paid attention to. Or, and here's one thing, and I'll tell you this, and then I'll stop talking for a few minutes. Um, I want to, I like to have control. I, I want to see what I can do in terms of control of the, the environment in which I'm working. I'm not a developer, um, but I'm real good at tweaking things that exist or now with my best friend chat GPT or Claude, which I like better uh, for coding, you know, writing the thing that's going to, that's going to uh, uh, help me do something. Um, so what was it? Oh, I lost my train of thought, dude. I went off on a, on a tangent. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, so shoot. Oh, I know. I know. So what I wanted to do was I have a thing where I'm looking at the block themes versus classic themes and what you know what that interface is like and, and and all and i'm like you know if the style book which is clicks in could be made more upfront and tied to control so you could say you know what i want to control my headers and the sizes and my images and if i'm in the style book i could do that and if there was a way to interact so i'm like well, what if i i just want to put the link to the style book in my admin can't do it at least I haven't figured it out because there's no URL to it. It's something that's loading when you're going into the editor and you and if you watch that URL, it's not changing because it's all happening in the browser. And I'm like, okay, then what's the magic parameter that I can send that I'm not seeing kind of stuff. So I have to do it. And it's like, that's where the, 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 what's nice about the old way is certain things are a little bit more manual. There are URLs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
versus what's now happening in the browser and what's happening with React. Well, and like I said, playgrounds, I was just firing up playgrounds for people again. I assume everyone's seen it a bit too, but if you have it, I mean, the, the good and the bad, they warn you like right when you first start launching it too, to say, you know, this case storage, none and all that. But if my if my browser crashed, you know, I was in the middle of doing some, I shouldn't ever be doing this, but you know, let's say I was doing some crit critical testing thing in playground and then my browser crashes. Bye bye. You know, there, there goes all my stuff. It's really just an in memory kind of instance. So you're right. The more the more you do, the more resources you put in here. Yeah. If you if you did something like it's not even just playground itself. But, um, as a uh, Trisha probably has seen too, page builders. I mean, my early experience with Divi that was a nightmare. That thing would freeze all the time too. And you know, you'd you'd click and wait a couple seconds for something to open. Elementor can be just as bad too on a big site. So. But yeah, I'm I'm a little fearful that the block editor and themes and things like that could become it can have that same issue too. Hopefully not, but you know, yeah, I I definitely hear you about that. Um, what else were we? I didn't see anything show up. Peter, did you see anything show up in the chat about questions or topic things? Uh, I've been okay. talking too much, so <laughs> that's right. Um. I was going to see. Um, so, so Karen, what's been coming up in your meetups that are, you mm -hmm. know, some of the challenges? Uh, we have a lot of people ask us questions. Yeah. And we we try to go through them even if the people aren't there. So, um, although we don't record our uh, our meetups that are casual like this where people can bring problems, we don't record those. We only record our formal programming. Yeah. Um, but we do try to go through them and we have a wide range of skill levels. So it's all over the place. Um, every, everything from deep conversations into SEO to yeah. people who are totally brand new. So I, it's what I love about meetups. Yeah. Yeah. What's the meetup that you host? I must've missed that. I'm sorry. Uh, West Orlando WordPress. West Orlando. Okay. Yeah. We actually okay. meet weekly. We alternate between in-person and zoom. Cool. So what? we do okay. one formal program per month, which is on Zoom, is the third Thursday. And um, all of our other are the kind of bring your problems and we'll talk through them. Yeah. But I'll tell you what I'm, this is more of a rant than anything else. Let's hear it. <laughs> um, And I, I hesitate a little bit to do this with Mark here because you just did the whole thing on dynamic data, but I, I feel like <laughs> ranting about dynamic data. Do it. Do I am rant. in the middle of rebuilding several sites because I was using Toolset. And mm -hmm. now because Toolset hasn't been developing now for two years, I mean, they're still doing security updates, but that's it. That makes me nervous. So I'm rebuilding all the sites to take it off of there. The reason I picked Toolset when I picked it, and I know, Peter, you use Toolset too, I right? I do, yep. The reason I picked it, there were two reasons. Um, because when I was when I picked Toolset, it was about five years ago now, and the block builder was pretty new. There were no other dynamic data tools that were working in blocks at the time. So mm -hmm. that was one reason. And the other reason that I picked it was because it is a complete dynamic data tool set. And none of the other tools are still nothing. I agree. You, by I mean by complete, I mean you get you have make all your custom posts, fields, taxonomies, blah blah blah. You can uh, do query in the back end. You can do filtering on the front end. Uh, mm -hmm. You have forms so that you can yeah, uh, uh, and you actually have access controls to forms too. Yeah. All in one tool. Yeah. And now. I have to cobble things together yep. uh, between multiple tools to get all of that functionality. And my best friend right now is Perplexity AI, which I like because, <laughs> because yep. it gives you its sources. And so yep. if I need something more, I can click on it. But I mean, I am, I'm not a, a developer. I don't know code. Uh, I know what I need to do. I can explain it in English. I'm very good at prompting because I I, I know what I need to accomplish. Right. Um, but I'm having to have Perplexity AI open and just talk to it all day long and saying, I'm using this set of tools and 
this is what I need to accomplish uh, because you need code to cobble them all together. Right. And I, right. that just, it, that to me, it, it I think it's, a, a failing that we don't have any other complete dynamic data tools Yeah, because it's so integral to building a complex website. Agreed. Are you saying you're rebuilding with tool set now? Or are you no, I'm else? rebuilding to take tool set off. So I'm using ACF and generate blocks and uh, search and filter pro. So you, you got to do search and filter pro, something like that. Okay. You know, it's the How filtering and stuff that's built into tool set. Yes, the filtering I, is the hardest part. Yeah, I I did. I have a website that I did years ago that I'm like, how would I do that now? Because in, in Toolset, and it was taking products and uh, images with those products being used and the accessories that go with, and everything was cross referenced. And you mm -hmm. go to the photo library, and it'll say. Oh, we got uh, eight photos, right? Little parentheses, eight photos of that particular tool. Click on it, show. And I'm like, how in the world would I do that now? But in Toolset, I was just building it. Now, you had to do some HTML code type of thing. Mm -hmm. Their biggest mistake was they, they got on blocks too soon. And then what happened with Toolset, as far as I know, guys correct me if I'm wrong, but they they ended up, now they were chasing the changes that were happening happening yeah. in blocks. And then they were like, we're stopping developing for a while. Mm -hmm. And then everybody goes, oh, you're stopping developing. And it's like, no, they were like waiting for the dust to settle, but they had already gotten ahead of the game. Yeah. And put them behind. Right. And everybody else said, we don't even do that stuff, you know, because they had their own blocks for stuff like that. Now it's like, no, use yes. a and then you can use generate blocks or cadence mm -hmm. blocks or any any of the things that are that use dynamic data. So, but that filtering and stuff like that, the forms, front end forms for for people to fill data in on the, and then write it to a to a post type. You know, I built a whole job board using tool set where yep. people and I'm like, how would I do that now? I guess I get a job board plug in. Well, yeah. Now, I mean, the thing is that the the individual tools have caught up. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like WS Forms, you can do, you can do uh, one of the things that was missing for a long time was the ability to edit a post from the front end. But right. WS Forms lets you do that now. Hmm. Um, so, know. yeah, so WS Forms, uh, and they're not the only ones. The other, other, a lot of plugins let you at least do post creation from a form plugin not necessarily editing. Editing right. is, yeah. But I just, to me, it is it's such an integral set of things you need to accomplish for any a website with any kind of complexity. And it's just amazing to me that there is not any other complete tools for it. I, I, I The amount of time that I have had to put into this um, in terms of I mean, there were other reasons these sites needed to be rebuilt because these are sites that I built uh, when I knew a lot less than I do now and they have other <laughs> issues. Like I'm fixing yes. a lot of stuff, yeah. um, but I don't know. I just, I it just blows my mind that there's not a complete set of tools other than tool set. Well, uh, I mean, I've never used tool set. Sounds amazing. Um, I know you kind of have your stack set up now, but did you... When you were looking at other ones, did you look into Crocka Block at all? I looked at Crocka Block, um, and I think that they're really confusing because they sound like they're only for Elementor, but then they sort of say out of the side of their mouth that you can use it on other stuff too. Yeah, they. Yeah, I used Elementor for five years now recently, and with Bricks, but um, yeah, they they that I think that's where they made their prowess and their money, but they. Mm -hmm. They integrate with a lot of their tools are Gutenberg. I think almost all the stuff you can use with Gutenberg mm -hmm. and then some of the stuff that you can use with Bricks now as well. But I mean, I'm not telling you to do more research because at this point now it seems like you're set in there, but like it does have like, like I use it because I like it a little bit more. I have the LTD, so that's one thing. But I, but I also yeah. I have ACF Pro, but like there's a lot of things that like Jet Engine, I like what you're saying, the concept of like having it all kind of together because you can do mm -hmm. post types, taxonomies, all that sort of stuff, relations. Um, and then you can also, they actually, they actually have, I don't know why more people don't use this because it is a great tool. They rebuilt their form plugin 
and made it jet form builder went from jet forms to jet form builder and i was this was like as i was getting into it and they built that a form builder in the block editor like with actual like blocks and stuff this was like early on kind of i feel like in in gutenberg times um so that's like fully block based now you can do a ton of stuff with that it's actually really powerful i will say that their their documentation does lack sometimes but um really powerful there so they have the forms they have the post creation you can do all that sort of stuff and then uh, the filtering, they have Jet Smart Filters, which is one of their mm. kind of module plugins that they have. So it does have a lot there. If you're looking for stacks on new websites, maybe something to take a look at um, because there is a lot there in the in the block environment now. Um, but it sounds like you got, you got something solid going on there too. And it, it's nice to separate some things sometimes. Uh, again, with yeah. your main stack though, it's, I don't know. There's there's no there's there's many ways to do stuff, right? Mm. So. Always, always. <laughs> Welcome to WordPress. There's always many yeah. ways. <laughs> uh, Trish, uh, Trisha, I also I just want to say to you, you said at the beginning of where you almost wish you didn't get into Elementor, but we all start somewhere. Exactly. I have said this on other things. When I first I I started in WordPress in 2013, I was doing my personal blog. My skill level was pick a theme, change some colors, and start writing. And it wasn't until 2018 when uh, I actually do uh, the site I'm rebuilding right now is the uh, Florida Tropical Weavers Guild. It's the State Weaving Guild. And um, I started working on that site in 2018. They are my guinea pig site. This is the third time I'm rebuilding it. Um, and because of them is why I have learned what I have learned. And most of what I've learned has been by showing up at things like this. We all start somewhere. We all learn. It's what I love about WordPress. It's why I keep showing up at things like this. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I, I've seen um, I've seen people that charge thousands of dollars that have uh, I would say frankly worse work than uh, what Trisha was showing us on her site, which I think came out really well. So <laughs> honestly, kudos for that. Fantastic. So good job. Yeah. Yeah, and we always say another good way to, to practice skills and make a difference is volunteering too. Like you said, mm -hmm. you, you may think you don't know much, but trust me, there's a there's a nonprofit someplace that could, to to them you're the expert, you're you're the geek. <laughs> you know, they're like, oh, you can build me a site, you know, and it's like. Mm -hmm. I mean, this site is a volunteer site. This Florida Tropical Weavers Guild. I do this as a volunteer, yeah. and um, at this point, they couldn't afford to build the site that I'm building for them. Like they don't have the budget for this, but that happened because we learned together, you know? Yeah. Very good. So, um, I, uh, Mark, Brennan, I think you guys were asking like with, with the, uh, the meetup, I was trying to find, oh, there it is. So we haven't seen him in a while, but there, there's a guy named Eagle. I think you, probably everybody's run into Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Eagle. And um, we're actually always in his, Brendan brought me into his, his. Yeah. Of yeah. He, he would come here, but we haven't seen him in a while. And then there was, there's another thing that, that he got. And he, he, we, we would be in a lot of things. I, I just haven't seen him in a while, but I, I yeah. somebody told me he's just been really busy. I'm guessing also time zone. It's yeah. I, I came in the middle of my work day <laughs> yeah. on the West coast. Yeah. So thanks. Um, and I'm normally up till midnight. at the, <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. yeah. I know, and Eagle sometimes goes on because he's got a lot of news to share. So <laughs> yeah, that's it. And 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 I'll I'll go to his, but it's like okay, him. And then the, there was there's another one in I don't know, but they ended. I saw mid Eagle recently. I can't remember something last week, but it was some. It was um. It was not something like this where people were talking. It was like a, a, a presentation. presentation. Yeah. yeah. Look at us all caring about Eagle, but <laughs> he puts out. I put a link to um his his support website that he uses for his meetup and he likes to these are some other meetups that he goes to so these are he adds the ones that 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 he goes to he added where hartford's in there and all uh too so th these are some other uh pretty good ones um we, we got to get orlando on there it sounds like yeah you're right because right? I, I mean it's very west coast heavy right because most yeah. I mean, that's where he is yeah, and where he is. Yeah. yeah and we and we right and we snuck in hartford just for <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to know i mean i think more people would show up if they knew like and i'll yeah. certainly like whatever talk about it in other meetups because i think people people just like going to them too honestly yeah 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 are, are you with i will ask everybody 
is the online meetup fatigue thing like Ray and I are preferring it for a couple of reasons. We don't have to travel, mm -hmm. you know, or, or we don't have to secure a venue. Um, I mean, it was the library, but Ray in, in Ray's town, you know, I'd have to drive over the river kind of stuff. Um, but in terms of the in-person and, uh, and, and meetups on, on, in, in terms of the global community, it's like, Oh, we got to get everybody back together. And I see the value, but the flip side is, you got to drive somewhere and, and you know, and uh, I mean, and I can attend across the country without any kind of effort. So. I, and I think the second thing that we found was just what we do here on computers, like what we just did with Trisha's site is so much, is so much easier doing yes. right. here. Doing yeah. this in, yeah. that in person is so hard. We, yeah. We used to try to do this with a projector and everyone's like, what is that? Look at the screen. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like it fits that very well. I, I do miss like, we did have a, a bigger local presence for a long time too, but now yeah. people join here online. So we, we probably have 50% ish, I'd say Peter, like uh, yeah. in terms of like, Connecticut people versus non-Connecticut people. Sometimes. Uh, and I like what Karen said too, about you guys have most of them in person and, and one online. I would probably do it we the do. opposite. Yeah, we do half and half. But yeah. Okay. Uh, half and I mean, yeah, we yeah, do half sounds and half. Good. And we, um, we did, we started online uh, because of COVID yep. and we did it. And then we only added um, back in person. And then we just, the second in person, we only just added, I host that one. And the reason I did that is because there's actually two, um, there's two meetups in Orlando. There's Orlando and West Orlando. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Orla the main Orlando one, which has been around a lot longer, um, they did, they kind of dissolved during COVID and they are meeting again, but only in person and only once a month. But regardless where I live, it's 45 minutes to drive to either of them. Bingo. Yep. And so uh, we just started an in-person one I, that I'm hosting because it's in my neighborhood. Like, I'm, I'm sure That's i'm not familiar. the only person who doesn't want to drive 45 minutes to get to a meetup like where i live in the middle of the two of them let's see what we can do so we've only met for three months so far um, but that's what we have been doing is like organically adding them as we've had the ability to do so i love online yeah yeah too. gerald go ahead yeah i think online is the primary way that I like to go, uh, one of the groups I belong to, and they meet a lot of times up to six times a month. And this is on a genealogy group that I work with, because I'm doing a lot of genealogy site uh, data, is they have, a, they do a hybrid every meeting, most of the meetings. Uh, the primary four meetings every Monday, they do a hybrid and they did invest in an owl device and that really helps hybrid meetings be yeah. successful i mean otherwise it's at least an hour each way for me to make the in person yeah now i once in a while will go there in in person because you want to do that once in a while but the hybrid gives me the choice of whatever i want to do and i'd highly encourage anybody that's thinking about it to consider hybrid if they want to do a combination yeah i have i hosted um our local weaving guild um, during Zoom, I I was the host for two or three years, um, and they do they do hybrid now, um, and I'm not I'm no longer the Zoom host for that one, but um, it, there are definite challenges to doing hybrid of of who can hear and who can see. Yeah, that's where the owl comes in because it eliminates that that issue if you don't have something like the owl. You know, you somebody that's running the meeting, the in-person location has to keep other people from talking in the background mm -hmm. and they have to repeat yeah. everything that somebody yeah. says that's in the live meeting. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. The online people feel like they're second class citizens at the, the meeting because the other being ignored and everything. But yeah, it, it's tough because like you said, Peter, I know especially earlier this year and late last year meetup itself was very much pushing hey let's start meeting back in person when, when we we talked we're like eh, maybe <laughs> we're, we're yeah. not already yeah that. we're trying oh, to I, really? i've been trying to get the san diego wordpress meetup it's been totally dead for the yeah. last two or three years and everywhere in person caught wants to charge like 15 grand a meeting and it's like okay well that's not going to happen yeah. and that's... then I, I guess wordpress announced they're going to open it up to to like places of faith that would be more amenable and yeah. wouldn't charge as much. So 
maybe that'll change things. But also San Diego County is is massive and it takes like an hour to drive north to south. Right. And then we have people in Mexico that actually want to come up too. And that yeah, know, it's just easier to just do it online. So yeah. we have yeah. that joke in Orlando. You're going an hour and you're st- where are you going? You're going to Orlando. Like right. it, a lot of metro areas are like a lot of California. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Connecticut, you can be yeah. from one side of the state to the other in an hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not quite that small. Yeah. How far apart are the two of you? I know where Peter lives. He's probably 15 minutes away from me. Or oh, so. okay. And, yeah. yeah. 20 yeah so i gotta get i gotta drive over the connecticut river yeah and uh, ray lives in the town i grew up in oh okay i actually i my mother grew up in norwich okay and i i we lived in middletown from when i was three to when i was 11 and then we moved to boston area and i have family i have family in torrington and norwich and old saybrook and westbrook so I know Connecticut. Connecticut it's, well. it's fairly easy to get around as long as yeah. you're near a highway. Where Connecticut gets a little wonky is like yeah. those northwest corners, the northeast yeah. corners where you're like driving back roads and stuff. Don't don't drive on Route 67 right now. We've yeah, got washed out so <laughs> many Hey, and Mark, you're going to uh WordCamp US? I will be there. Yeah. Ooh. Brendan, are you going? I am. Wow. Look at you guys. I don't oh, know. First one. I'm going to be very interested to get a report back because I always picture it as being like the same people seem to go to, but then I hear I'm wrong. They're just the ones that I hear because they are public. They are speakers on things. And it's like, Oh no, we got, you know, hundreds of people who've never been to word camp kind of thing. I, so. I will say the thing I, speaking of that kind of tying that to go with the Connecticut thing is we don't, we haven't had any regional word camps around New England in yeah. a long time. The last word camp I went to is, was that one in New York, New York City. That was a long time ago. I think that was the first year that I took over the group. So it was like 2018 or something, six years ago. I went, I went to the one and only uh, word camp that took place in Connecticut. It took place in Stanford in 2014. Wow. That was there, a long time. There was one in Rhode Island, I thought, too, at one point. But that yeah. was the last so it's, it's shocking here for new england you think there's so much like high tech and all that but at least wordpress they haven't there hasn't been a word camp around here in, in forever western new york though you've got rochester um yeah. Ni- niagara falls i think it's i don't know there's like buffalo so yeah. but you know that's 10 hours drive that way so portland yeah. seems like a somewhat of an odd choice just because it's kind of away from other metro areas and the city itself is not that big but I, I, I guess it's I guess it's like not California, but it's still yeah. West Coast. So that's kind of that's I, how I think of it. <laughs> I, I think I recently heard something like they're gonna do two years in a place, two years in a yeah. place, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think they have to book the venues like that for some of them. So yeah. Yeah. I I help organize events locally. Um I, well, I, I've been on the board of three things that we're we're running events and when you can book multiple years. Yeah. And at least two years out, you get much better deals on venues. I wasn't sure the reason why that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I would never. I tell you, I would love to have a word camp in Hartford. I would never want to be an organizer of it. I can't. <laughs> the amount of work that I know that people are doing, for uh, like to volunteer potentially. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that's funny because to me, the, the 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 organization piece is not that scary. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying it's not work, <laughs> but right. it's doable work. Yeah. And then we have one last thing, because uh, I'm, I'm kind of I, I always find this really interesting because word camps are far different than other types of things. I went to I don't know if anyone's heard about HubSpot and their inbound conference. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. their inbound conference that they help that they hold in Boston is it's like this. I. HubSpot people are kind of cult-like to me. Of course, they probably say the same thing about WordPress and that it's just like what they live. Yeah, but everyone man, uses a CRM for everything in their lives. Yeah, oh my God, and the, and the cost for it. But their their keynote speakers are people like Obama or... Um, Whoa. You, you they have know, a lot of money, that's for sure. It's so much yeah. money. He, he spoke, and everybody that, I mean, big names, whether they're actors or it's humble it's so different and people say how come we can't have that well because <laughs> we're not an organization money. that charges you know twenty thousand dollars minimum 
a year uh, from and, and you peek behind the curtain at WordPress, Peter. And I, I'm sometimes shocked at like how it, it even like puts out a release. Every <laughs> well, that's what we do. Like a bare bones crew, and you see it like really. This is one like, day, like, Mark and I and, and Brenda will show you sort of the make that WordPress.org oh, Slack boy. channel, and you're amazed that anything gets done. That's for sure. Yeah, oh oh yeah, I, I have been in that channel. <laughs> I just don't go in there anymore. I mean, I I, I would love to, but it, it literally it feels like it would be a full time job to just dedicate the mental bandwidth to to just get in. Yes, and I just yes. I can't I can't. Yep. I would love to, but no. Yep. Yeah, I'll just you know submit a whatever and go okay, but you got to look up and go. So somebody put something like in ten years ago. I mean, <laughs> I'm like I. I so put an issue in on GitHub. Yeah, yeah. that's what it is. No, no, no. First, search all the all the you know, past tickets and issues that have been open for decade and a half. Comment on all those, and then put your new right. One. I, message actually... message the guy who's been dead for ten years, and his family has moved on to bigger and better things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too how bad. About this, the uh, uh, how come my plugin didn't get approved? All well, because one person has been doing it for us, <laughs> not doing it anymore. But yeah, there was a. I think it was a, maybe WordCamp Minneapolis or some some WordPress event, but not the big. European one, I saw a guy. There's someone posted a picture of one guy. He's like, This guy just did 37 plugin approvals or something like that. I'm like, This is not a brag. This is like, this poor man yeah, exactly. is working during the event. And oh, exactly. my God. Yeah. No, I'm with you. All right. Well, let's. All right. Right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for, for joining. Very nice meeting. A lot of fun. Yeah. Everyone. Thank you both for Thank hosting. Folks. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming. Hope you come back. Good next body. Month. You guys. Yeah. Thank you guys. Feedback. Good so luck, summer Trisha. school is over, though. Are we going to have winter class? We're going back to work. Back to work next month. Uh, we get a little bit more discipline. We pick a topic. We give a presentation. Then we do this. Right. Right. <laughs> Plenty of time. When we remember to give ourselves the time for it. Right. <laughs> I could be All right. All right. Have a good one, so, everyone. Take care, everybody. Guys. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye.